Keep the big ones, but throw the little ones back. It's old fishing wisdom and current environmental law. Now fishery scientist David Conover and his team at Stony Brook University say this is actually making marine stocks evolve to be smaller and weaker. The fish are far lower in abundance than they have been historically. But a second observation is that fish are much smaller than they were historically. As reported in Scientific American magazine, Conover and co-author Matthew Walsh mimicked fishing by removing the largest fish from a population in the lab. After only five generations, the fish were much smaller and less fit compared to when they removed only the smallest fish or removed fish randomly. Where we selectively removed the largest individuals, these fish produce less eggs, they survive less than the other populations, they consume less food, and they even grow less efficiently. Conover and Walsh say these genetic changes apply to all seafood. They think it may explain why just limiting fishing often does not lead to quick recovery for depleted fish populations. We have to think about the genetic effects of size-selective harvests. Conover says changing the fishing rules could reverse the problem over time. For instance, if we had a minimum and a maximum size rule. That would keep more of the big fish parenting the next generation. So if we want to keep landing that tasty catch, we might just have to let some of the big ones get away. I'm Brad Closa.